I have never coded professionally. I don't code every day. And all of this time, I have been living a lie. Well, sort of. Um, I wanted to make a dramatic entrance, but you see, I started this channel as a blonde girl learning how to code, so that was true. And then things have changed, things have evolved, and this channel has gone slightly on a different direction, but it was never my intention to code professionally. Let me tell you the story of Coding Blonde because a lot of people have been asking me for it and all of this will make sense. Let's start at the beginning. Let me take you back to 2015 when me, Masha, was trying to stay out of my home country, which is Russia. I was trying to uh, find a job in Europe or the US where I am right now. And you know, I needed to be sponsored for a visa and with my background in marketing and economics, it was very hard to stand out from other candidates, even though there's a little fungus gnat here. Nice. Even though I had a master's degree, everybody has a master's degree in Europe. Like that's, that's just insane. So I was trying to stand out as a marketing candidate and I decided to revisit something that I remember enjoying as a little girl, which is coding. Yes, I coded when I was between 12, 10 and 13, I was obsessed. I was coding in Visual Basic and won a bunch of competitions back in Russia. But I then went to the UK and went to a boarding school and my focus became learning English and, you know, actually doing all of the subjects that I used to be doing in Russian, now in English. So my focus was to learn the language, survive and make friends. And I completely forgot about coding. So I decided to revisit that. And I understood that being in market in the marketing space, having coding skills will definitely help me stand out. And those are the skills that people will be, companies will be more likely to sponsor for, sponsor for a visa for. We're talking about a work visa here, non-immigration, specialist, uh, but for those of you who have gone through this process or are going through that process right now, you can probably relate. So I started learning how to code and I've always been curious about running a blog. In fact, I started one before it was called Masha Loves Chocolate and it was going to be uh, about me cooking with chocolate, baking with chocolate. But I quickly realized that wasn't very sustainable when I was living by myself because I would eat everything that I made. And yeah, it was not a good idea. Uh, not for my waistline or my bank account, buying new clothes every single time I come up with a different recipe. Anyway, that aside, I decided to explore my curiosity and start a blog about documenting my journey and learning how to code. And quickly it turned into the exploration of women in technology. And it was kind of fun. And honestly, when I was interviewing for Google, which literally happened two weeks after I started my blog, now that I'm saying this, I have to uh, make sure that you understand the timelines. I started applying for Google roles at Google half a year before I got that interview that led to a job. I've had multiple different interviews. I've had some rejections, half a year of applying. This one actually works two weeks after I started doing something and like, you know, created my own blog and all that stuff. Two weeks later, I get yet another interview that actually led to a job. And I really, really made sure that I plugged my blog on every sing during every single interview, because I thought that it made me stand out as a candidate. Just the fact that I'm learning how to code and just the fact that I'm taking initiative and starting a blog and I care about a cause, women in technology, you know, like at the time it was such a, great way to showcase myself and some of the skills instead of just talking about them. Long story short, I managed to get through all of those interviews and it was, it was a long process. I think I had six or seven interviews. None of them were technical. I did not hold a technical position. Uh, my role, I was working as um, at YouTube. Uh, my role was community manager slash partner manager. And I was working with YouTube creators like myself right now. Hello. And I was organizing events and I was working one on one on them with them on helping them navigate the whole creator journey. And it was lots of fun, but my job required a lot of travel and I was in a long distance relationship with the U S with this place where I am right now. And it took a lot of travel. <laughs> I didn't really have time for 
really relaxing or seeing friends in London. And of course, I didn't have time to keep up with learning how to code. And then that's when I realized that, you know, I don't necessarily need to learn these skills for myself, but I am very passionate about creating content about it. Does that make sense? You know, like those two things just overlapped for me and I realized that that was it. And that was actually when I started this YouTube channel because I was working with YouTube creators. So, you know, I wanted to feel what people who I work with, my clients, my customers, whatever you want to call it, what they felt like, what was their process every single time. And I feel like it made me much more empathetic towards them and made me speak their language because I understood their problems because I felt them, you know? So it was a great experience. I started this YouTube channel and my content shifted, shifted from exploring technology to fun concepts, explaining some technological concepts in a fun way. I mean, you may have seen some of my coding blonde dictionary videos where I was just jumping around the Google office in a bug outfit explaining bugs, computer bugs, how they work. And you know, the um, infinite loop was me running, <laughs> trapping a colleague in one of those rotating doors and just running, 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 running. It was just lots of fun. I really enjoyed making that content. Fast forward about two years into my Google career, maybe a bit less, and I was thinking about what's next. And I was, a lot of people have asked me this question, why did I leave that wonderful company and the position that I really enjoyed? The reason for it is because I was trying to relocate here to Denver, Colorado, where my, at the time boyfriend, now husband, you know, things have worked out, <laughs> um, where he was. And I was exploring all the different options. We were in a long distance relationship for three and a half years at the time. And it was just driving us both nuts. Like it, it, it had to happen. So I was exploring different opportunities within the organization, within Google and outside. And the, you know, I'm career driven. The opportunity that had to work out was the one that was gonna be interesting in terms of my professional development. And the one that I found was outside of Google. So that's why I left. Um, it wasn't anything about it. It was just, I had personal reasons and this was the best way to achieve those personal reasons, those personal goals. Regardless, I don't regret anything. It was the best move at the time and it has exposed me to a whole new world of entrepreneurship, etc., and helped me get my company started, essentially. So we're entering a new phase of Coding Blonde where it became my part-time business because my other role was part-time at a university um, here in Colorado. It was called Global Entrepreneur in Residence and the other part-time was dedicated it was that was you know part of the reasoning behind the program somebody part-time who part-time has time to focus on their project which for me was coding blonde so i registered as a company and i started looking for ways into monetizing it and i remember honestly i remember the first brand deal that i had and how crazy it felt. It was like, wait, what? I can actually monetize this? I can like create value for someone else and get paid for it? That is incredible. So I was so grateful for all of the opportunities that came and my goal became, because the program was for one year, my goal became to earn just as much money as I was earning in a part-time salary. Granted, it's a part-time salary, but still with my business. That, that, was, that became my goal. And I, you know, started to working towards it. But in terms of content, in terms of what I was cre working on, it became much more lifestyle because this business became surrounded around my life, if that makes sense. I don't know. It, it just became more, much more influencer like. I don't really like the term influencer, but yeah, that's what it basically became. And guess what? I made my goals of, you know, matching my salary and I actually outdone myself. Um, I don't remember by how much, but yes, I, I earned, my business earned more than um, I was earning at the University of CU Boulder at the time. So that was awesome. And I was ready to take it full time. My There was some issues with the visa extension because they offered me to stay another year, but visa didn't get quite extended, you know how these things work out. And so my, well, my boyfriend at the time, my husband now, now, my boyfriend at the time, my husband now, back then, 
in 2019, we made the decision together that it was time to start like test out the digital nomad lifestyle because why not? And that's what we did. And so my content kind of evolved with that because again, it was very much based on what I was doing with my life, what I could, like whether I could go into people's offices or whatever, whether I could interview people in person, all of those things, it kind of like shaped my content. And yeah, it was lots of fun. A lot of people were very curious about the digital nomad life. And I was so excited that I could share my insights on that and my experiences on how that was going. Again, still a lot of focus on technology and coding even though I wasn't interested in, you know, coding every day myself. I'm very passionate about getting as many people into this industry as possible. And I think that the more people there are in this industry, the wider is the scope of the problems that we can collectively solve. And that's, that's key. That's what I'm super passionate about. And I think that it's not just about technical people necessarily, but it's also about people like me who love tech, who are super interested in technology, but don't necessar aren't necessarily interested in using their just technical skills. Because I know if I stayed more in, you know, learning, I would develop the te technical skills I could transfer, but I'm just finding it so I'm just finding the overlap of those things so interesting. So I'm staying there. I hope that makes sense <laughs> because it does make sense in my head. Let me know in the comments if it does. If it doesn't, I will be very happy to explain it further in another video or in the comments as well. But at the time I was thinking about my purpose and why am I doing this? Why am I doing what I'm doing? How can I have a bigger impact? Knowing the skills that I have, knowing the interests that I have, knowing this overlap, this unique overlap that I am experiencing, I'm witnessing, how can I have more impact in this world? And that is, that brought a lot of dilemmas, especially, you know, with 2020 being the dumpster fire that it was and, you know, continuing into this year, brought a lot of thoughtful discussions with my journal. <laughs> I was trying to get out of my head because otherwise it was just, it's just too crazy. So yeah, we're kind of reaching the crescendo of this video of the story. <laughs> and I don't know how to, I don't know how to like properly announce it or tell you I'm very excited. Um, and you can probably tell that this video is much more casual, um, much more candid, which is the type of content that I want to do going forward. I just want to share more of me, uh, not necessarily more of me, but you know, add more personality to the content. And I really feel that the technical angle um, was restricting me. Because of the name Coding Blonde, a lot of people perceive me as somebody who codes every single day and I don't. And it's not something I'm interested in doing just because I have found something that I'm interested in doing and I feel like I can have an impact in this world in a much more fulfilling to me way, at least for now, maybe it will change, who knows? But at the moment, this is not what I want to be doing and I want to be talking, I don't know, I felt like the, the name was really limiting me. You see, I'm struggling to find words here. Let me look at my notes at how I put it or the bullet points. <laughs> I think I got it. We're entering a new stage with Coding Blonde, a new evolution. Maybe those limitations were just in my head, but they were there and we're changing the name. <laughs> it's time for a rebrand. It's time to get out of those shackles. That expectation that I will be only talking about technical content. No, I will not be talking talking about um, only about technical content. And next week, I'm going to tell you all about what this new whole brand is going to be all about. But yes, there will be still tech, there will be still coding, don't get me wrong. But there is just going to be so much more purpose driven stuff, stuff that I'm super passionate about as well. And I think that is not necessarily talked enough about when it comes to your career and your personal development in technology, because I think those things go hand in hand. We're not robots. We have to talk about our soft skills, difficult conversations, etc. I am so tired, honestly, like 
I'm so tired of so many different stereotypes in this industry and I'm really trying to break them. I just give you a hint of what the name is going to be. <laughs> you gotta return next week to see what it's actually gonna, uh, gonna be. And make sure you subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this conversation with me. Well, this was more of a monologue, but I would love to have more discussions with you. So let me know in the comments what you think about this video. Hello, Masha from the future or the next t-shirt right now. And you know what? The rebrand is actually happening this week. I got mixed up with dates. So yeah, it's going live very soon and there will be giveaways. So make sure you stay tuned on the community um, tab. See you there. If you have any thoughts about my journey, etc., if you relate to anything that I have experienced, comments. I am so excited to have a two-way conversation. Whenever I think about the limitations that that name had, this name, it's still here. <laughs> um, is you know the typical talk is cheap show me the code no you don't have to show anyone the code you don't have to prove anything to anyone no you don't have to be technical to be in tech you can be and you can be amazing at it and you don't have to prove anything to anyone no i am so over that yeah this was a blabby video <laughs> i hope it made sense Again, let me know in the comments and I'm super excited for that unveiling next week. Literally going to film that video um, once I change this t-shirt. Hello YouTube bulk, bulk creating content, batch creating content. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you in the next video where I have changed the t-shirt, but it's actually going to be in a week's time. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments. Like it, dislike it if you didn't like it. Hey. It's your choice, but any types of engagement help with the algorithm and help me reach more people. So thank you so much for engaging with my videos, with my content. I honestly am so, so grateful for you having been here all this time throughout this journey since 2015. It's been crazy. It's been awesome. And honestly, I'm forever grateful for the opportunity that you gave me to do what I want and to do what lights me up and to hopefully have the impact, impact that I'm trying to have in this world. Thank you. I hope you're having a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing and I'll see you next week.